Okay, today I will start the web guide. Oh, sorry. Mm, as we say, as I said uh, yesterday, uh, web guide is nothing but a hollow metallic tube of uniform cross sections. Okay, it is a hollow metallic tube which has the uniform cross sections. Uh, for transmitting electromagnetic waves by successive reflections from the inner walls of the tube is called the waveguide. Okay, look at the figure. This is actually a waveguide, uh, which has the inner conducting wall, conductive wall, and at the center it is hollow. Okay, a hollow metallic tube for, of uniform cross section for transmitting electromagnetic waves by successive reflections from the inner walls of the tube is called the waveguide. Okay. So if I ask you a question, what is the waveguide? The answer would be this one. Okay. So it is a hollow metallic tube of uniform cross sections. Section for transmitting electromagnetic waves by successive reflections from the inner walls of the tube is called waveguide. Uh, the figure which has been given in the slide is a Rectangular waveguide. This is a figure of rectangular waveguide. This is a this is the figure of rectangular waveguide. Okay, so why do we need the waveguide? Because uh, if we have the frequency larger than three gigahertz, then it is difficult to transmit over the conventional cable, transmit, uh, conventional uh, transmitting cable. So it is not possible to pass the signal over three gigahertz through the cables. So, so we need the waveguide. Okay. So this is due to losses. This is due to losses in the solid cable. But the thing is why it does not pass through the uh, general cable, general transmission cable over the three gigahertz because there is losses in the solid cable and the dielectric used to and it uses dielectric to support the cable. That's why we use waveguide, which is a hollow metallic. Which is a waveguide that is hollow metallic. Okay, so we use waveguide, which is a hollow metal. So the thing is, why we do not use, we cannot use the uh, regular cable because in the regular cable, there are losses. Why loss? Because of the dielectric inserted in the cable. Okay. That is the reason. Okay, what are the basic features? So, first feature is that Waveguides are used to carry energy from one equipment to another. Okay, 
so let me draw a team uh, let's say this is a source okay These are the horn antenna. Okay, these antennas are horn antenna. And here is the meter. So that we can check. And here is another device, uh, another waveguide. Okay, see, first thing, waveguides are used to carry energy from one equipment to another. So from the source, that means the apply stone. Or the SSGA. Solid state can oscillator. or from the solid state gun oscillator, the wave goes through the antenna. The energy passes through the antenna, uh, through the solid state, uh, through the uh, slotted waveguide or rectangular slotted waveguide, we do have this one. So here to pass the energy, we need the waveguide. We need the waveguide, that is the waveguide. And here again from antenna, to the meter or the receiver or you can see this is a receiver antenna to the receiver we need another waveguide so use of waveguides are there okay two uh, two uh, two waveguide two types of waveguides okay so waveguides are used to carry energy from one equipment to another example in antennas transmitting transmitter power to antenna and microwave signal from antenna to receiver which we have discussed a little while okay waveguides are made from copper aluminum or brass okay they are metals the metals are extruded extruded into long rectangular or circle part. okay so here we can say that extruded means what extruded means let's see uh, we have something like that okay here here they just cut those thing make a gap that is extrude that is extrude okay 
okay that is the extrude so to making a hole uh, inside it is the extrude okay or if if they want the uh, circular then they make a hollow okay from the circular thing they do this extrude and copper aluminium or brass they do use this okay and then the energy to be transmitted is injected from one end of the wavelet through proofs Energy and magnetic field of signals bounce of the walls back and forth. Energy to be transmitted is injected from one end of the waveguide through probes. That means uh, let's draw a waveguide, rectangular waveguide. Okay. This is a rectangular waveguide. Here are probes. Okay. Inside the waveguide, there is a probe. The energy to be transmitted is injected from one end of the waveguide through probes. Through probes. The energy and magnetic field of signals bounce off the walls back and forth. The electric and magnetic field of signals bounce off the walls back and forth. Bounce off the walls back and forth. Okay. Ah, so this is the features of the waveguide. Okay. Now, uh, next thing, EM field. EM field that means the electromagnetic field configuration within the waveguide. Types of electric EM field inside the waveguide. So, Infield configuration can be determined from Maxwell's equations. Uh, Infield configuration can be determined from Maxwell's equations. There are a number of configurations and each configuration is known as mode. Each configuration known as mode, like TEM, transverse electromagnetic, transverse electric, transverse magnetic, and the hybrid. Transverse electromagnetic, that means the TEM. Transverse electric, that is the T. Transverse magnetic, that is the TM. And that is the hybrid. TM, TE, TM, and the hybrid. Four types. Uh, TEM is known as the principal wave. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, let us discuss about this. Components of electric and magnetic field in intensities in an EM wave. That is the X, that is Y, that is Z. Zero, X, Y, Z. EX, HX, UI, HY, EZ, HZ. Okay, components of electric and magnetic field intensities in an EM wave. So what are these? EX, HX, these are the components. These are the components of electric and magnetic field intensities. Okay, this is the electric field component in the x-axis and hx is the magnetic field component on the x-axis and that is the electric and magnetic field component on the y-axis on the z-axis. Okay, these are the components. And possible types of modes, transverse electromagnetic wave, TEM wave. Here both electric and magnetic fields are directed components. That is EZ is equal to zero and HZ is equal to zero. Here both electric and magnetic fields are di uh, directed components. EZ is equal to zero and HZ is equal to zero. Okay. Here both electric and magnetic fields are directed commercially. So that in the TEM wave, remember this, that EZ and HZ both are zero in the TEM wave. EZ and HZ both are zero. In the TE wave, in the TE wave, HZ is not equal to zero, but the EZ is equal to zero. Transverse electric wave, the electric field component is purely transverse to the direction of propagation. That is, Z is equal to zero and Z is, equal, is not equal to zero. Transverse electric wave, the electric field component is purely transverse to the direction of propagation. That is, Z is equal to zero and Z is, equal to, is not equal to zero. Two thing. TEM, both are zero. In the TE, TEC, transverse electric. Here is a transverse electric, that means is it equal to zero? And AZ has some value. Here see, transverse electro electromagnetic. That means electric field and magnetic field, both are in the transverse plane. That is zero. Okay, so uh, one thing uh, I think you need to know, what is the transverse plane? Ah, let's see. Okay. Uh, see this. Here, the signal going there. Waves are going through this. This plane, this is the direction of propagation. Mm -hmm. That is the direction of propagation. Direction of propagation, direction of propagation. And this plane is known as the transverse transverse plane this plane is known as the transverse plane okay So I think you understand what is the transverse plane. So, 
so transverse electromagnetic uh, wave that means in the here both electric and magnetic fields are directed components that is ez and ez is equal to zero so ez and ez both both are zero and transverse electric um, wave that means the ez would be zero but ez is not zero and transverse magnetic wave that means the tm magnetic wave that means that aj would be zero aj would be zero hybrid in the hybrid both are not equal to zero in the in the hybrid in the hybrid ez and aj both are both have values here neither electric nor magnetic fields are purely transverse to the direction of propagation that is ez is not equal to zero and ez is, is not equal to zero okay okay here is the magnetic field okay so uh, this is the magnetic flux lines appears as continuous loops these are the magnetic flux lines this red color and the blue color blue color are the electric flux lines this is the te mode te mode transverse electric mode tm mode uh, that means the transverse magnetic mode this is electric field uh, this is magnetic field we propagate through this propagate wave propagates through this through this inside this so this wave would propagate we would propagate inside this so magnetic flux lines appear as continuous loops electric flux lines appear with the beginning and end points this is the t mode and this is the t mode Okay, so rectangular waveguide. Any shape of cross section of a waveguide can support electromagnetic waves, of which rectangular and circular waveguides have become more common. So, so those these are common waveguides, rectangular waveguide and magnetic, uh, rectangular and circular waveguides. These are very common. Okay, these are very uh, common waveguide. So, rectangular cross section has the is known as the rectangular waveguide, and circular cross section is known as the circular waveguide okay So circular and rectangular uh, waveguide. Uh, another guy join. So this is the rectangular waveguide x y z dimensions of the waveguide which determines the operating frequency range okay so look at the figure
here the A is the width, width of the waveguide, rectangle the waveguide. A is the width, B is the height. B is the height, this, this one. This is B. And this is A. This, this length is A and this length is B. And dimensions of the waveguide which determines the operating frequency range. Okay. So dimensions, uh, dimension determines the operating frequency range. Like the size of the waveguide determines its operating frequency. The frequency of operation is determined by dimension A, which is usually made one half the wavelength at lowest frequency of the operation. That means one half of the wavelength. That means such a lambda. That means <coughs> lambda is half, half lambda, half lambda. Okay, so dimension A, which is usually made one and a half. So A is equal to lambda by two, half lambda. Okay, which is usually made of half the wavelength at lowest frequency. At cutoff frequency and below, the wavelength will not transfer energy. So remember this, at cutoff frequency and below, the wavelength will not transmit energy. So it will not transmit energy. <coughs> uh, lower than, <coughs> uh, low, uh, lower than cut off. Uh, At cut of frequency and below the wave will not transmit energy. So remember this thing. Okay, see this angle of incident at high frequency, angle of incident, angle of reflection at medium frequency, at low frequency, at cut of frequency. So no, no signal will pass at low frequency, medium frequency, at high frequency, this kind of thing will happen. Microwave will bounce back like this. Okay. So we pass in a waveguide at various frequencies and various frequencies like this. Okay, so a propagation, when the probe launches energy into the waveguide, so how it propagate the wave, when the probe launches energy into the waveguide, the electromagnetic fields bounce off the sidewalls of the waveguide as shown in the above diagram, like this, like this, okay. The angles of incident and reflection depend upon the operating frequency. At high frequencies, the angles are large and therefore the path between the opposite walls is relatively long as figure. Okay. At high at higher frequency, the angle of incident and angle of reflections are large enough for that. Okay, both are large. But at medium frequency, it reduces. At low frequency, it reduces. And if we apply the cutoff frequency, no energy will pass. Okay. At lower frequency, the angles decrease and the path between the sides shortens. When the operating frequency is uh, re reaches the cutoff frequency of the waveguide, the signal seems to bounce back and forth directly between the sidewalls of the waveguide and has no forward motion. Cutoff frequency and below, no energy will propagate. Okay. 
this is this kind of probe this is the rectangular waveguide probe are there large diameter probe low power large diameter small diameter high power okay water so this kind of waveguides are there like uh, this is the uh, H band waveguide this is the E band this is the twisted waveguide okay electric field magnetic field okay flexible waveguides are there okay now look at the applications applications of microwave <sighs> okay how a microwave oven works <clears throat> okay how a uh, microwave oven works so this is microwave oven we already know that how does it work let's check it out history actually uh, it has been invented by the Dr. Parsi Labor and Spencer, a microwave oven has been invented by Dr. Parsi Labor and Spencer. Accidentally, he accidentally invented this one. And what is the working principle? Microwave radiations generated by a magnetron. Oh, uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, sources. Uh, sources microwave has three source magnetron magnetron uh, klystron amplifier klystron amplifier and the solid state gun oscillator. Solid state gun oscillator. Solid state gun oscillator. These are the types of micro, uh, uh, microwave sources. Magnetron, Clastron amplifier, Celestron oscillator. We do have these two in our lab. Clastron amplifier, solid state gun oscillator. We do have this, uh, but we do not have the magnetron. Okay, so microwave radiations generated by a magnetron pass through the exposed food. It passes through the exposed food. Okay. It passes through the exposed foot, create dielectric heating within the foot. It creates dielectric heating within the foot. This is the basic principle on which a microwave oven works. Okay, so microwave radiation generated by a magnetron pass through the exposed foot. It passed through the exposed foot, create dielectric heating within the foot. This is the basic principle on which a microwave oven works. That means the back and forth the water molecule will will uh, hit each other okay so how the oven works electrically ele electricity from the wall outlet see this is the uh, figure of the oven see the power or comes here this is the cooking cavity this is the door uh, and this is the magnetron, this is the magnetron, this is the waveguide, and this is the steroid blade. From the waveguide, it goes to the steroid blade, then the microwave, high frequency microwave, will pass us through this one. This is the power. Electricity from the wall outlet travels through the power cord and enters the microwave oven through a series of fuse and safety protection circuits. When the oven door is closed, the electrical path is also established through a series of safety interlock switches. The electricity from the wall outlet travels through the power cord and enters the microwave oven through a series of fuse and safety protection circuits. When the oven door is closed, the, an electrical path is also established through a series of safety interlock switches. 
see electricity from the wall outlet travels through the power cord so electricity comes from this comes from the uh, outlet uh, from comes from the outlet through this power cord and enters the microwoven through a series of fuse and safety protection circuits then it goes to the magnetron but before going to the magnetron it goes to, uh, it passes a, a step up transformer when that open door is closed an electrical path is also established through a series of safety interlock switches okay sensing that all system are set to go the signal activates triac it will activate the triac producing a voltage path to the high voltage transformer it it makes a path to the high voltage transformer the high voltage transformer along with a special diode it has a special diode and capacitor arrangement increases the typical household voltage from the 220 volt to the 3000 volts okay 220 volt to the 3000 volts the magnetron converts okay the magnetron converts the high voltage into the microwave frequency for cooking it will convert the high voltage into the microwave frequency for cooking the microwave energy is transmitted into a waveguide the microwave energy then transmitted into a waveguide the waveguide feeds the energy to the stirrer blade and into the cooking area when the door is open the in or the inner uh, or the timer reaches zero the microwave stops okay that's it works okay this is the figure this is the transformer okay a step up transformer this is the uh, magnetron this is the waveguide this is your blade through the waveguide the wave passes okay i like this so how foods get cooked the microwave that penetrate the food have an electric field that oscillates 2.45 billions times a second a frequency that is well absorbed by the polar liquid molecules such as water sugar fats and food uh, other food molecules and water interacts with the microwave uh, flipping its orientation back and forth very rapidly bumping into one another and producing heat cooking the food so that is the way foods get cooked water interacts with the microwave flipping its orientation back and forth very rapidly bumping into one another and producing heat cooking the food the microwaves that penetrates the food have an electric field that oscillates 2.45 gigahertz uh, per second other applications of microwave like radar 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 means radio detection and ranging a system for detecting the presence direction uh, distance and speed of aircraft ships and other objects by sending out pulses of radio waves which are reflected off the object back in the source okay and see the time delay how radar works the time delay between the transmitted pulse and the received echo can be used to determine the distance to the target s is equal to v into t basic principle and operation of the radar uh, transmitter receiver data recorder Here, what happens? Uh, it sends the electromagnetic energy pulses. Then echo comes. Then it will understand using this formula V into T. Radar pulses. Then uh, it goes to the receiver, data recorder, processor, and display. Okay, some radar functions are that like transmitter, receiver, processing, and control. Okay, radar types. You can check this. And application of radar in the military, uh, what it does, it uh, for detecting the target 
for uh, target tracking and weapon control, tracks the targets, uh, directs the weapon to an intercept, and assess the effectiveness of engagement. Uh, this is a military application. And remote sensing, like weather observation, they, they can observe the weather, planetary observation below ground probing. And air traffic control used to safely control air traffic in the vicinity of the airports. Mapping of regions of rain in the vicinity of airports and weather. ATC, that means the ATC. And law enforcement and highest shif, uh, safety. Radar speed meters are used by police for enforcing the speed limit. And aircraft safety and navigation, airborne weather avoidance radar outlines the regions of uh, uh, precipitation. And just wind shear, okay. And shift safety, space, mine inspection, locating underground pipes. Okay, this is a wireless charging. Another thing. Um, they have shown the wireless charging procedure. Okay. Magnetron, what is the magnetron? See, magnetron is a vacuum tube oscillator that generates high power electromagnetic signals in the micro frequency range. That is the magnetron. When a charge or charged particle accelerates in space, it generates electromagnetic waves. This statement is the derivation of Maxwell's law, which says that a classical electromagnetic radiation is ultimately generated when a charged particle is accelerated through space. So this is the magnetic field, this is the electric field. This is the wave direction. See this, this is the antenna, this is the magnet, this is the anode, uh, this is the cavity, uh, cooling is vents, this is the electricity, uh, electron cloud, uh, central filament, Okay, microwave radiations. And slotted wave antenna is used receiver section. Okay. Other applications of microwave like see homeland security metal detector. In the metal detector, they use the microwave. Okay. Potential security applications, detection of hidden weapon and explosives detecting non-metallic weapons, post postal screening of envelopes for bacteria, chemical biodetection. This is the envelope, okay. Postal screening, standoff detection, explosive, security screening one. Okay, and some uh, terahertz images can reveal objects can concealed under cloth paper, tape, even behind walls. So this is the total application of microwave. Overall application of microwaves. Overall applications of microwave. See this. Uh, communication, terrestrial and satellite. Uh, radar, civilian and military, civilian means air traffic control, aircraft navigation, ship safety, space vehicles, remote sensing, law enforcement, military means surveillance, navigation, guidance of weapons, electronic warfare, carbon, industrial and biomedical, like uh, process control, drying, curing, treatments of uh, spores, Best management uh, treatment, nuclear cellu uh, cellulosic uh, monitoring, imaging, hyperthermia, heating, industrial or household. Okay, these are the applications of microwave. So this is end of our first chapter. Okay, end of our first chapter, that means the introductory slides. That is all, uh, introductory slide. Then from the next class, we will start the transmission lines. From the next class, we will start the transmission lines. Get ready for that. 
I already have given this slide to you in the messenger. Okay, moreover, I will upload it to the Google Classroom also. Okay.